Hi, it's Steve. Today we'd like to show you how to change the door bellows on your front load washer. Over time, mold or mildew may form on the bellows, or it may be cut and cause a leak. It's a really easy job to change it. Let me show you how we do it. Now before we begin this repair, the first thing we'll need to do is to disconnect power to the washer. And we'll also want to pull it forward enough so that we can access the back to remove the top. Now to remove the top, there are three screws across the back. On this particular model, there are a number 20 Torx head screw. So remove all those and then just pull the handle back about a half an inch. That will disengage the front of it from the console. Then you can lift it off and we'll set that aside. Next we'll pull open the detergent dispenser drawer and just push down on the little release tab over on the left side there so that we can pull it all the way out and set that aside. Now there is one screw on the far left here and again it's a number 20 Torx. Just remove that. Now to remove that console there are some clips on the top that just fit down into this nylon piece as well as one little tab over on the far right hand side. So what we need to do is just lift up on the top edge of that control panel, disengage those clips, reach inside, and just carefully depress that tab. You can then open the door. And there's a little slotted opening right in the center at the very back. You may be able to lift up on that console enough to disengage it. If not, just take a flat blade screwdriver, insert it into that opening to release the tab. Then we can lift the console away. And there should be enough harness there that we can just lay it on top of the washer. Now next we'll remove three screws that secure the door latch to the front panel. We'll set those aside. Now there are also three more screws across the very bottom that secure the lower access panel. Again, there are number 20 Torx. And just support that panel as you remove the last screw. And let it drop down. We can remove that and set it aside. Now well, next we need to release the door bellows from the front panel. And there is a wire band that goes all the way around that to hold it in place. And there's a spring on the very bottom. So using a flat blade screwdriver, just go into the loop on the end of that spring we have a nice firm fit on that or use a pair of needle nose pliers. We'll stretch that spring enough that we can pull that wire out of the opening, remove it and set it aside. And then peel that bellows away from the front panel and just tuck it in behind. Just push the door latch away from the front panel at the same time. We can close that door up and then we'll remove two screws in the very bottom. Now all that is remaining are two more screws in the top corners. So just support that front panel as you remove those two screws. And then we'll tilt that pan load at the bottom and just let it drop down right behind that bracket. And then we can remove the whole assembly and set it aside. On this model, we need to remove that fill hose from the top. Just pull it off of the nozzle that sprays inside of the tub. We'll next need to remove that as well because we will be reusing it. So we'll just push the nozzle through the plastic washer. Also peel the bellows away from the soap injector tube and then lift that door latch assembly off of its holder and set that aside. And there is a band clamp that holds the bellows to the odor tub. Just need to loosen that. Remove it and set it aside. And then we can just peel that bellows away from the odor tub. And then we can discard it. Now before we put the new bellows in place, we we'll want to clean that lip around the edge of the odor tub so that we get a nice tight fit with the new one. And we've cleaned up the edge of the odor tub here. And you probably notice that this tub is damaged beyond repair, but we're going to 
put the bellows on to show you the procedure anyways. Now when installing it, we do need to make sure that this portion of that bellows sits outside of that lip on the outer tub. And there's a little groove in that outer lip that will match the groove in the bellows. We'll also need to make sure that we line up this little indicator tab to the 12 o'clock position, which is right where there is a bolt that secures the counterweight. So we'll start by positioning that and hold it in place while we go around the perimeter and fit the bellows over that lip. And just continue to go around the whole perimeter of that bellows. Now when it's properly fitted, that lip on the edge of the bellows should lay against the tub. With that in place, we'll next install the clamp. And again, we need to make sure that we have that clamp inside that outer rib and rotate it so that we can easily access the adjustment screw. And as we tighten it, just do a visual check, make sure that it didn't slip out of place. And then tighten it securely. Now next we'll pull the bellows over the soap injection tube. We need to make sure that we pull that up to those little ribs that indicated that it's on fully. Next we'll put the spray nozzle into that bellows and we'll put the square portion towards the front. Push it in so that it's flush on the inside. We'll take that plastic lock washer and snap that down over those two little spines and that will hold it in place. And we'll fit the rubber tube onto it. And then reposition our door latch assembly. And now we can install the front panel. Now when we go to reinstall that front panel and door assembly, you'll note that there are a couple little projections down on the lower side of those two flanges, and those will fit into these little square holes. And that will help support that panel as we attach it. So we're gonna tuck the two ears in on the top, fit those under that reinforcement panel. And as long as we hold that to the front of the washer, it won't drop down. Install the retaining screws and the two across the bottom. We'll next open up the door. And then we'll line up that door lock assembly. Or both the door switch and the latch mechanism fit through the respective openings. And then we'll reinstall those screws. Then we'll pull the outer lip of that bellows 
out through the door opening. And if you look carefully at that lip, you'll note that there is a V-shaped groove right at the very edge of it. And that's what's going to fit down into the flange on the front panel. Just go all the way around the edges, pull that into place. Now when it's properly seated, that outer edge should lay flat against the front panel. Now we're ready to reinstall that clamp. So we're going to position it so that the spring will be in the 6 o'clock position. Make sure the wire fits down into that groove. Now the safest method for reinstalling that is to take a pair of needle nose pliers and we're just going to grasp that hook on the wire portion of that so that we're actually pulling the spring. Get the wire around as far as it will go and we'll stretch that spring. Tuck the wire in the rest of the way and it's secure. Well, next we'll put the lower access panel in place. Now if your washer is sitting on the floor, you may wish to tilt it back some to access those three screws because they're fairly close to the floor. So we'll center that panel and then we'll tuck the lip in behind the front panel. Lift it up as far as it will go. Now the center one sometimes is a little tight to get in there, so you may need to push up on that panel as you install the screw. And once we have that in place, we'll put the control panel back on. We're going to position it so that this clip fits into that little rectangular opening on that support panel. And the plastic clip on the right hand side lines up with the slotted opening here. Pretty centered. Just press in on the top and those clips will engage. And then we'll put the screw in on the left side and then reinstall the detergent drawer. And then the main top. We'll center that top side to side and lay it down about a half inch gap between the front of that top panel and the back edge of the console until it lays flush with the top of the cabinet. Slide it forward to lock it in place and reinstall the three retaining screws. We're now ready to push the washer back into position, reconnect the power and our repair is complete.